the way we look at it, when we take that oath, the ground is level. We all agree to these policies. We all agree that if we violate, that we could pay for it with our lives. And unfortunately, we understand that it's our best friend that might walk us into a room and, uh, and take our life. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is blessed on this end, and as always, we give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. Well, pretty soon you'll be hearing from me from the UK. I am off and running fairly soon. Very excited. We have uh, almost 20 uh, pretty much sold out dates. We start pretty soon in London, and then we go to Scotland, Wales, Ireland. It's going to be a cool one. We're really excited about it. People are, uh, seem to be excited about it also, so wish me luck. Going to be gone for quite some time, but uh, it's going to be an enjoyable trip. Again, very excited about it. You know, today I'm going to answer some questions. For some reason, I've been getting hit a lot with this. I don't know why, but uh, I'm going to answer it. You know, if you ask me and you guys want to know something, uh, I want to reply and be responsive. So what are the things that get really get guys murdered in that life? I want to be clear on this because, you know, I responded or I, I responded to John Panisi, uh, who I don't know, you know, seems like a nice guy. Uh, we're from different eras. I don't know John, never met him, never spoke to him. But I responded to some things that he said about the life and then he responded to me. And I want to make this clear. When I talk about it, I'm talking about my era in my family. Now, sometimes things are different in other families. There's different policy rules. Uh, you got to keep the strict rules, but sometimes a family can operate a little bit differently, have a little different policy. If it's not a commission rule that has to affect all five families, well, then some other families do things a little bit differently. So when I talk, I'm talking about the Colombo family during my era. And during my dad's era, 60s, 70s, 80s, right into the early 90s. That's what I'm talking about. Anything other than that, what's happening recently, I'm not really sure of. I don't really know. You know, I have my ear to the wall a little bit, but, you know, I don't pay that close attention, to be quite honest with you. So what are the things that can get you killed in that life? Well, you take an oath of omerta, and remember what I told you about the oath. The oath is not an oath to lie, steal, kill. Uh, it's not an oath like that. It's an oath of silence. You're never supposed to admit the existence of the life. You're never supposed to betray the life. So how do you betray the life? Well, obviously, if you become an informant, if you're working with the police, if you turn on the guys, then yes, that will get you killed. If you're on the street and people know about it, yes, that could get you killed in my era. Now, some of you are going to say, well, there's guys walking around right now. There's guys on YouTube, you know, that testified, that went into the witness protection program, and they're still alive. Well, I can't answer that. I don't know what's going on today. I don't know why, and uh, who knows why. I'm not going to even speculate on that, because I don't think I should. And I certainly don't wish any harm on anybody, so I want to make that very, very clear. Back in the day, I did know guys that, you know, got killed because they were informants. That's the bottom line. Now, Michael, you're still alive. Yeah, okay, I'm still alive. Uh, there's a reason for that. I'm not going to get into that again. We've talked about that. I did betray my oath, no doubt about it. I'm talking to you on YouTube about it. And that's enough to get you in trouble. And I told you about my boss, Persico, and what happened, and so on and so forth. And again, I just outlasted everybody. And, you know, that's the bottom line there. But if you become an informant, if you betray the oath, yes, of course, that can get you killed. Second, in my era, in my era, we were not allowed to use drugs. If we dealt with drugs, we got killed. That was it. Now, do I know people that, you know, were killed for using drugs? I know somebody that blew his brains out because he was afraid he was going to get walked into a room because he got caught with an undercover agent in a drug deal and he was going to be indicted. I told you about that. Big Tony the Gawk, Tony Orgello, soldier for a long time, 
friend of my father's, close to me. He was one of my guys. What happened? I told you that. He told me that he got involved in a drug deal. He was concerned. He said, Michael, I know this is outlawed. They're going to walk me in the room. I said, Tony, they won't. You've been a good soldier for many, many years. We're going to work this out. I get on a plane, head down to Florida. I land. I find out that my friend and a, a loyal soldier in that family blew his brains out in a phone booth because he was afraid, because he knew he violated a strict order by not using drugs. Now, some of you are going to come back and say, Michael, you know, the Gaudis were into it, and this guy was into it, and Genovese was into it. I know all of that. I understand that. I told you I'm talking about what was, what was allowed in our family, and it was a commission rule. Now, did some people do it? Yes. Did some people get away with it? Yes. But we were not major drug dealers. If you dealt with drugs, you could die in that life during my era. Okay, that's number two. Number three, obviously, you don't ever mess with a uh, made guy's wife, sister, daughter, relative in any way. That could get you killed. That's a no-no. I believe I told you about two brothers. Remember one time I told you I was driving home with a guy who was another made guy in Brooklyn. I dropped him off. Uh, when he got out of the car at his house, he said to me, Michael, don't leave yet. I said, okay. Uh, he went to the front door. I figured maybe he wanted to see if anybody was home. Maybe he didn't have his keys. He opens the door. I see him peek his head in. Looks like he was calling out to somebody. 30 seconds later, he pulls the door shut, comes back in the car. And I said, hey, what happened? Nobody's home. You lost your, what happened? He said, well, nobody's home. I said, well, it's your house. You, you open the door. He said, I don't go in the house when nobody's home. I said, why not? And then he told me his father, his father had been messing around with somebody's wife or daughter. I'm not sure. I don't remember. He told me at the time, but I don't recall. And the two brothers killed him. They got an order to kill their own father. And he said, once that happened, he said, I could never go into my house alone because I'm haunted by the ghost of my father. He said it was 30 years ago. I have never entered that house after I had that experience uh, because my father's ghost haunts me. Terrible. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I would have never, ever taken the life of my father or anybody close to me. I don't care what anybody said. I'd have been in trouble or whatever. Or I would have alerted them, and we would have fought it out. It would have never happened. But, you know, that's part of the life, man. Sometimes you just stick with the code. So that's three things so far that will get you killed. Another thing, obviously, uh, you don't ever raise your hand to another made guy. Never. Whether wrong or right, you don't do it. You do that, get you killed. Remember in Goodfellas, uh, Joe Pesci, he wasn't even a made guy, but he killed Billy Batts, who was a made guy, and eventually they walked him into a room and he got killed. You can't do that, people. You cannot get away with that. Um, and do I know of that happening at any time? No, I honestly don't. I don't know of any made guy that raised his hand to another made guy. I don't know of it. And if it happened, it happened, but I don't know of it. So that's the fourth thing. Fifth thing, you can get in a lot of trouble, I'm telling you right now, if you're beating people out of money. You don't beat the boss. You don't do shady things in business with other made guys. If you got to give people a, a money count, you make sure if you're going to steal anything that nobody knows about it because that could get you killed. You don't ever, you know, not give people the right count. You don't ever manipulate a, a maneuver in business with another made guy. Uh, you do that and that can get you killed. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you this too. I know a couple of guys that, you know, did some rowdy things when they were drunk. Once, twice, three times, four times. You can't use being drunk as an excuse to get yourself in trouble in the wrong way. If you're an abusive to a made guy and you come back and say, hey, I was drunk, get you killed, man. Could get you killed. Can't do that. And yes, I know of a situation when that happened. Getting drunk in that life is no excuse. You know, and I kind of like that. You can't use getting drunk as an excuse, you know, to do the wrong thing, especially if you're doing it consistently. So, you know... Those are the horrors of the life, people. Uh, but, you know, the way we look at it, when we take that oath, the ground is level. We all agree to these policies. We all agree that if we violate, that we could pay for it with our lives. 
And unfortunately, we understand that it's our best friend that might walk us into a room and, uh, and take our life. And you know, another thing I know, there was guys in there that seemed to enjoy the act of murder or killing. You know the Roy DeMeo deal. You know you heard a little bit about Greg Scarpa, Patera. You know these guys. Every one of them end up dying the same way you know, that they acted throughout their lives. When people act like that, it doesn't last. I'm telling you, you can't be the first to pass judgment. You can't be the first guy to always pull the trigger. You can't solve all your problems by killing people because eventually it will catch up with you. Nobody wants somebody like that around them. Nobody trusts them because they're wild cards. At any given time, something can happen, so you don't tolerate stuff like that. You know, my dad taught me something, and it worked well for me. He said, Mike, someday you're going to be a cop regime. He says, in this life, and you're going to have to make a choice, you know, to condemn somebody or not. He said, always make sure you're the last to condemn somebody. The last. Don't be the first. Because when your time does come, they're going to treat you the same way. They're going to remember, hey, was he always the first guy or was he always the last guy? And, you know, I, I, uh, I followed that to a T. And I was never the first to condemn anybody. I just, just wouldn't do it. You know, always tried to give somebody a break. So, you know, those are the things that could get you killed. Obviously, you know, you, you break an order. If you refuse an order, if you're told to, you know, go out and do some work and you don't do it, that's a problem. You can't do that and you don't survive. So, you know, look, again, strict policies. I'm not saying they're good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying it's part of that life. And uh, if you get involved with that life, you got to know what you're getting into, you know. And that's why when I walked away, I wasn't mad at anybody. Did people do me wrong at times? Ah, you know what? That's part of the life. You understand that. And, you know, they're not all saints in that life, obviously, you know, and things don't always go the way you want them to be. But when I left, I didn't want revenge on anybody. I didn't want to hurt anybody. I wasn't looking out to, you know, to, oh, they did me wrong, so I'm leaving. I left that life again to preserve my life and to preserve my family's life. And I knew that the life was in trouble. When those racketeering laws came around and so many guys were flipping, becoming informants, and the government had all those tools, I knew we were in trouble. And the life is not the same today. I don't care what anybody tells you. It's not the same. So, you know, that's it for today. It's an unpleasant subject. I get that. You know, it's not something I enjoy talking about, but I've been asked about it so much. I think, I mean, I think since I did the videos on the cemetery, St. John's, remember? And uh, Lake Mead, you know, the bodies were popping up. Uh, and then the, uh, you know, the place where allegedly John Gotti had put bodies. Since I did those videos, I've been asked a lot about, you know, what gets you killed? What murders happen in that life? You know, so I'm responding to that. Hopefully we won't have to talk about this again. So that's it for today. Again, hopefully uh, next time I'm tuning in, it'll be from the United Kingdom. We have a lot planned there. I'm going to be uh, visiting where Peaky Blinders was filmed. I'm also going to be visiting the place where the Cray brothers uh, once spent some time in jail. And uh, United Kingdom is a great place. There's going to be a lot. We have a lot planned from there. So stay tuned. I always appreciate you tuning in. And by the way, subscribe. Yeah, I'm asking you, please do subscribe. Uh, we're on a march to a million. We're getting there. And thanks to all of you enjoying the content. So we're going to step it up. We're going to try to do even more than what we've done in the past because you've all been great and we really do appreciate it. So how do I leave you? Same way. Be safe. Ladies, I can't preach this enough. So much has been going on in the news. You almost hate to turn it on. People getting killed. It's just terrible. So be safe. Be healthy. I mean this sincerely when I say it. God bless all of you. And yes, God willing, I'll see you next time. Take care.